Hi, this is Mr. Heineke. I'm going to read the book called The Fenway Follow-Up. I'm going to read it in two chapters at a time. So right now I'm going to read chapter one and chapter two. It is an AR book. It is 3.9 and worth one point. <clears throat> Watch out, Kate yelled. Boston's best hit batter, Big D, had just hit another rocket. The baseball was headed straight to the top of Fenway Park's left field wall right where Kate Hopkins and her cousin Mike Walsh were standing. Yowza! Mike ducked down as the ball sailed overhead. That one is out of here. Mike and Kate watched the fly over the wall of the stadium towards the sunny city street below. They waited to hear the clunk of the ball hit a car's hood or, shatter, or shattering glass as it hit a windshield. But all they heard was a loud thump and a soft thump. No crash, no smash through glass, and no car alarm. Mike scampered up to the railing that overlooked the street. The ball bounced against the wall of the parking garage. A little girl in yellow overalls chased the ball as it rolled down the sidewalk. Ah, why didn't land near us, said Mike. He pulled a worn tennis ball out of his fleece jacket and bounced it against the cement steps a few times. He carried a ball everywhere he went. I've always wanted a real Major League Baseball. If Big D had hit it to you, would, it would have knocked your head off. Kate said she took off her baseball cap and slipped her long brown ponytail through the hole in the back of the cap. At least then he wouldn't be able to think about baseball. It's all you do. Mike can argue with that. He did spend a lot of time playing baseball and talking about her and watching him. Last year he even started a baseball website. That was why he was so excited to be at Fenway Park watching batting practice. Kate's mom, Mrs. Hopkins, worked as a sports reporter for a popular website, American Sports. She was covering that day's baseball game between the Boston Red Sox and the Oakland A's. Kate lived with her mom in Cooperstown, New York. Mike lived down the block. His mom and Kate's mom were sisters. Mike, Kate, and Kate's mom had left at 7 o'clock that morning and driven to Boston. Mrs. Hopkins was in the press room, but Mike and Kate were using their all-access pass to explore Fenway Park. They had... Mike, Kate, and Kate's mom had left at 7 o'clock this morning driven to Boston. Mrs. Hopkins was in the press room, but Mike and Kate were using their special all-access pass to explore Fenway Park. They had started at the seats on top of Fenway's giant left field wall. This 37-foot wall was painted dark green and ran from left center to center field. It was known as the Green Monster. Mike turned his attention back to the field. Hey! Watch the way Big D stands in the batter's box. He has an open stance. His back foot is closer to the plate than his front. It's what gives him power to hit like that. Even from far away, Big D's arms muscles stood out through his uniform. He was tall and strong and always had a big grin on his face. Big D was one of Boston's most popular players. Do you see the bat he's using? Mike said. It was a light-colored wooden bat with a green, dark ring dividing the handle from the barrel of the bat. It's his good look charm like a four-leaf clover. He calls it his green monster, just like the wall. Pow! Big D hit another ball out of the park. Across the field by the Boston dugout, a small group of fans cheered. They had come out early for batting practice, too. Did he try to use a bright green bat in a game once? What happened? Mike was an expert when it came to baseball. But Kate knew a lot about everything else. She read all the time books, newspapers, websites, anything that she could find. Yep, but it wasn't allowed, Mike said. According to the rules, bats have to be brown, black, or natural. So now Big D just uses a regular bat, but he calls it his green monster. After he batted, Big D headed back towards the dugouts. The fans around the railing said, Big D, Big D, Big D. Big D leaned his bat against the low wall in front of the seats. He took off his hat and waved. The fans went wild. Many of them held out baseball, hats, and other souvenirs for Big D. Big D started to sign autographs. A photographer stood behind him, taking pictures. He carried a long black tripod case slung over his shoulder and a camera with big lens. I knew we should have waited over there. We could have gotten his autograph. Well, maybe next time. It's cool that he's signing a lot of autographs. While Big D greeted the fans, Wally, the Red Sox furry green mascot, came trotting down first place trying on the first baseline towards home plate. He waved to the people near the dugout, but he tripped and sprawled first, face first on the grass. The crowd roared with laughter while, while Wally wiggled on the ground. Big D and the bat boy ran over to help him up. 
Molly took a small bow and gave the crowd a big wave without falling over. Big D patted Wally on the back and they ran to the dugout. One baseball player after another had batting practice, but Mike and Kate could tell there was no one as good as Big D. Boston had finished batting practice. A, boy, a bat boy and a bat girl came out to collect the bats. I love that job. You get to meet all the players, watch the games, and get paid for it. Come on, said Kate. I told my mom we'd go stop at the press box before the game starts. She's going to give us some money for lunch. Kate and Mike found their way through the halls, lined with hot dogs, ice cream, and peanut stands. They rode an elevator up to the fourth floor. After showing a security guard their passes, they entered the press room. This room had a wide, open window facing the infield. Hi, kids. She was sitting at a desk in front of a window. A few reporters sat on either side of her, working on computers or talking. <coughs> Mike went straight to the windows. Wow, what a view. You can see everything from here. It's like you're on top of the field. It's very amazing, said Mrs. Hopkins. Sometimes fall balls get caught up here, so you have to pay attention. Just then a phone rang. Kate's mother reached for it. You'll never believe what just happened. What? Big Deeb's lucky bat has been stolen. Yep, this has been his favorite bat ever since he hit his 400th home run. But we saw him just a little while ago. The security chief thinks someone took it after batting practice, said the reporter. Big D was doing a TV interview in the locker room. Usually the bat boy or the bat girl pick up the bats after practice, but they couldn't find Big D's. It's probably worth a million dollars. Maybe not a million, but I'm sure a private collector would pay an awfully lot for it. A loud crack ripped the ballpark. One of the players hit a line drive. Ball flew straight into center field. Mike turned to watch it land. A flash of blue caught his eye. Mike turned to land, it, a flash of blue caught his eye. The police are looking near the Boston dugout. Looks like they're questioning the Bat Boy. I bet he stole the Bat Boy. Bat Boy was talking to two people dressed in blue. Mike could see the word security on the back of their shirts. Oh, that's his Bobby the Bat Boy. He's a nice kid. I don't think he took Big D's bats to the reporter. The ballpark security people are probably just interviewing everyone, Mike Kate's mom said. I'm sure they'll ask equipment to check equipment and lockers for the bat. I saw that bat boy with all the bats earlier. He looks kind of suspicious to you. Well, everyone looks sus suspicious to you, Mike. But I want to see what's going on. Can I go check it out? Sure. Your seats are next to the dugout. I've got to stay here and work. Mrs. Hopkins gave him $20. Don't spend it all in souvenirs. Kate pocketed the money. As they were about to leave, the press door opened and a man walked in. It was a photographer from batting practice. He lifted his camera bag, tripod, over his shoulder, water bottle poked out of one of the big pockets in his jacket. Just dropping off my tripod. You're lucky you don't have to lug all this gear. He dropped the camera bag and tripod case to the carpet. Then he managed, they rummaged around in one of his jacket pockets and pulled out a bag of sunflower seeds. He pounded a few seeds into his mouth. Try lugging computer reference books and a pile of research papers around. That's not easy either. I guess everyone thinks their job is hard. I'm sure it'd be nice to be rich. Maybe we'll win the lottery. The photographer slid the long black tripod case under the table and poured himself a cup of coffee. Mike turned to watch the bat boy talk to a security guard. The second security guard searches the sides of the field in the box with the photographer set. Kate gave Mike's arm a tug and pulled him towards the door. Thanks for the money. We'll catch you after the game. Ten minutes later, they were sitting in their seats eating popcorn and, eating popcorn and hot dogs. They were only a few rows from the Boston dugout. On the field, the A's were still taking batting practice. Awesome seats. <clears throat> Great idea. He owe my mom a few car washes. She'd like that. Swish, and an Oakland player hit the bat and missed. <clears throat> Here's the bat boy, said Mike. He shaded his eyes against the April sun and pointed out to the dugout. Doesn't he look a little old? The bat boy wore bright white Red Sox uniform and a baseball cap pulled low over his forehead. He kept glancing back over his shoulder and scanning the stands. I read that you have to be at least 14 to be a major league bat boy. He looks old. He does look a little shifty. Think we should go try to ask him a few questions? Always thinking like a reporter, aren't you, Simon? Well, <clears throat> you said he looked old. I may be suspicious, but you look nosy. I'm not. I just like to know what's going on. She fished around 
in her popcorn for the most buttery pieces. Fine lunch, she popped in her mouth. What do you say? She judges the popcorn. Should we go talk to him? Well, I don't know. It seems like he might want to talk to us. Kate looked up from her popcorn. The bat boy was staring straight at them. At the moment, Kate was startled. Then she relaxed. Actually, I think he's watching that guy in front of us. <clears throat> and I can see why. Doesn't that guy know that the Yankees are Boston's biggest rival? The white-haired man's... The white-haired man sitting in front of Kate and Mike wore a New York Yankee baseball cap, but he always, but he has a red sock shirt on. I guess he's confused, or maybe he just likes both teams. Out on the mound, one of Oakland's coaches wound up and threw a fastball. The batter swung at the pitch, pow, and the ball flew into left field. Even the coach turned around. Thunk! It bounced off the green monster. Another hit. In any other ballpark, that would have been a home run, but not here. You really have to hit them high to get over the green monster. Yeah, it was a nice hit, but he's not as good as Big D. Big D blasted over the green monster twice. But that was with his lucky bat. Who knows how he'll hit without it. I bet if he doesn't find it, the Red Sox will lose today's game. That's all for today.